Welcome back. She is a larger-than-life character with a big heart to match. That's right. Australian-born Geraldine Cox has become a hero to a generation of Cambodian orphans. And now, aged 70, her life's work is far from finished. It all started when I found out at the age of 23, 24, that I couldn't have children. Devastated by the news, Geraldine joined the Department of Foreign Affairs, imagining a career filled with travel and glamour. But life had other plans. My first posting was Phnom Penh at the beginning of the Vietnam War, and it was anything but glamorous. After returning to Australia, another life event would lead her to another path. I actually got fired in 1995, three weeks before my 50th birthday. But that was the excuse I needed to be kicked out of my comfort zone and make the decision to go back to Cambodia. In 1997, a coup had the country's royal family exiled, leaving no one to run the orphanage where Geraldine had been working as a volunteer. When I realised that there was nobody else to do it, it was like a thunderbolt in the head, you know, Geraldine, this is going to be your life. And it was, and has continued to be for the last 22 years. Now, Sunrise Cambodia cares for 3,000 kids, providing housing and education to vulnerable children. To those in her care, she's simply Big Mum. As a woman who could never have her own children, I've got hundreds of kids running around calling me Big Mum, and it's probably unprofessional for the head of a charity and a non-government organisation to have all the kids yelling out Big Mum, but I love it. And Geraldine Cox joins us in the studio. Geraldine, always wonderful to talk to you on the show. Thanks for the opportunity. Let's talk about uh, the kids in your care and describe for us what sort of a state are they in when they come to your orphanage? We have kids as young as seven that come to us from um, abuse, domestic violence. Some of them have been trafficked uh, into Thailand, into prostitution, slave labour, illegal rings, uh, adoption rings, slave labour. Um, and they come to us and they're very, very suspicious because every adult in their life has harmed them. And I, even when I go out like that to, to cut, touch them or embrace them, it's like a scared dog and they pull back. It takes time for them to get to know they're in a safe place um, and I can't even make um, eye contact with some of them when they first arrive until they're made to feel it's an okay place. Mm. And safe. And safe, mm. yeah. You can see so clearly as mm. you talk the impact that the kids mm. have on you. Mm. Tell us about that. Well, the kind of love I have in my life, pe hundreds of people to love and who love me back, I wouldn't change my life with anybody's in this world. Um, I love what I do. Um, I do it well. I find wonderful people to help me. Um, I wouldn't be able to do what I do without my Cambodian staff, my board and my people in Australia. And of course the sponsors that make it all happen. Um, the thing about Cambodia is there's so much need. I could come up with a project every day. All I need is the money to complete it. Yeah. There's just so much to do in Cambodia. I'll never ever run out of um, projects. Mm. Uh, there are also 3,000 children in preschool and mm -hmm. primary school under mm -hmm. the Sunrise Cambodia mm -hmm. project. W what difference does that make to their lives? Well, that uh, nursery school program started from uh, my manager saying, well, Geraldine, just outside our gate, they're subsistent farmers and mum and dad have to go into the fuel and they keep their primary school kids home to look after the littlies. Why don't we start a nursery uh, class? The nursery kids can come to us, the primary school school kids can go to school and that's enabled probably with all the children now that we've got coming to us in the mornings their brothers and sisters can go to primary school and thousands of kids are getting an education mm. it's so okay. simple all it cost for us was uh, the salaries for the teachers uh, the classrooms we already had from Macquarie Bank orange t-shirts and backpacks and we're away I, I saw in the notes that also in addition to that a lot of the children have moved on to they're going to university they're yes. doing further education so oh. you must be seeing oh. a whole new generation it's, that is going to affect... my oldest boy is 40 right. but at the moment I've got kids doing medicine law architecture civil engineering social work hospitality um, 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 banking management um, so many things that are going to make Cambodia a better place mm. and um, I try and spend as much time with them because after they're 18 and they're out, 
I don't have day-to-day -day contact, so I try and see them as much as I can to make them feel I'm still their mum. Oh, that's yeah. wonderful. Oh, I've got my first lawyer graduated. Oh, really? Yeah, I'm going to get free legal advice forever. <laughs> so you should, Geraldine. <laughs> yeah. um, now, you have some great news for us, because I think last time we talked to you, you were saying that you couldn't keep going doing this and the no. fundraising yeah. efforts for um, forever. You've found somebody. Yeah, I have. Um, how it started was I've, I've just finished five years cancer treatment. I'm OK now. Great. But it took its toll. And I looked at my program for this year and my body said, I don't know about you, but we're not doing that. <laughs> um, so through um, word of mouth, we found a wonderful woman who's quite well known in Australia, her name's Lucy Perry. And she's now taking over and funding our fundraising program, which gives me more time to spend with the kids and to write my second book. That is. So uh, it's the fundraising that really took it out of me, that pressure of getting yeah. $200,000 yes. a month uh, was pressure. Now I'm passing on the pressure to Lucy. <laughs> yeah, good well, on She you, looks Lucy. very, very yeah. capable, so don't worry. I think it's in yeah. good hands. You're also making a big difference with some community projects. Talk to us about that. Um, yes. Um, Australian Tax Office now requires centres like mine not to be just residential care for kids. We've got to branch out and do something for the communities. And this has been wonderful. In a village near us, we've built a bridge to help get kids to school in the rainy season. We've put in four wells, uh, which means that people can wash their clothes uh, and wash themselves. Before that, all they had was uh, having to walk to get drinking water. We've uh, built uh, 12 houses that are uh, dry and secure. And these were houses that were just banana thatched before. We're sending sick people to hospital from the village. We bought bikes for the kids to go to school and it just never stops. We're hoping to transform this whole village. $200 builds you a well mm. and changes the lives of hundreds of people. Yeah. Um, one of our big challenges this year, up in Siam Reap, there's 1,200 people in a floating village. They drink the river water yeah. and um, most of them have horrific gastro problems. For $50,000 we can build a sanitation project that will cure them and enable them to have access to free water and clean water. So we need $50,000 to get that on that will improve life for 1,200 mm. people. Geraldine, you have done so much for so many people and continue to do that. You're, You're an, an amazing absolute woman. Angel. Absolutely, yeah. you are. Wish Lucy all the very best yeah, from us as well. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Thank you, Geraldine. Thanks for your time. Thank for you. more information on how you can donate to Sunrise Cambodia, just please head over to our website. That's right, every dollar counts.